Hi everyone, so today we'll be doing a high yield review for biochemistry for step one. So the first condition we're going to talk about is a patient that comes in with recurrent viral, bacterial, and fungal infections, low B and T cell counts, and low immunoglobulins. So this is going to be SCIDS, Severe Combined Immunodeficiency Syndrome. This is a deficiency of adenosine D-aminase. The next condition, a patient that comes in with intellectual disability and self-mutilation, which could be something like, you know, biting off the fingers and the hands. So this is going to be lesch nyhan syndrome. It's an HGPRT deficiency. Since it's X-linked recessive, it's going to be present in little boys. They can also get a buildup of uric acid, so they can present with like gout symptoms. The next condition, patient will have a lack of the red reflex, bone pain, and an x-ray showing a sunburst pattern and a Codman triangle. So this is going to be an RB gene mutation. So this can be present with retinoblastoma and osteosarcomas. And so that's why we see these symptoms. So the next condition, it's going to be soft tissue tumors, osteosarcomas, adrenocortical carcinomas, and leukemias. So this is going to be Lee Fermani syndrome. These patients get a bunch of different tumors because of a P53 gene mutation. The next condition, this is going to be a buildup of the very long chain fatty acids, hypotonia and seizures. So this is going to be paroxysomal disorders such as Zellweger or adrenoleukodystrophy. And when your paroxysomes aren't working properly, we can't do beta oxidation and we get a buildup of these very long chain fatty acids. Now Zellweger and adrenoleukodystrophy, very similar conditions. Just remember it's a paroxysomal disorder um, and it can be present on a spectrum. The next condition, patient will have corneal clouding, gingival hyperplasia and coarse facial features. So this is going to be eye cell disease. In this condition, the patients lack the mannose binding. And when this is absent, the um, buildup is going to happen uh, in the cells because it can't be transported out to the lysosomes where it's normally supposed to go. Okay, so the next condition, a patient will have recurrent infections, infertility, and the apex of the heart is going to be on the right side, like we see in this picture. So this is going to be primary ciliary dyskinesia or cartagener syndrome. Next condition, bleeding gums, perifollicular hemorrhages, and poor wound healing. So this is going to be seen in scurvy, which is a vitamin C deficiency. The next condition, recurrent fractures, blue sclera, and teeth and hearing issues. Okay, so this is going to be osteogenesis imperfecta. This is going to be a type 1 collagen defect, and so that's why we get all these different issues here. Um, the teeth issues can also be called de uh, dentogenesis imperfecta. The next condition, it's going to be due to an FGFR3 mutation. The patient's going to have short limbs but a normal-sized head. So this is going to be an achondroplasia. So this is a gain of function of FGFR3, which allows us to normally lengthen our long bones, but in this condition, they're going to be little dwarfs. The next condition, we have a little boy with brittle, kinky hair and low copper levels. So this is going to be in Menke's disease. The next condition, we have a patient with stretchy skin, easy bruising, and hyperextensible joints. Okay, this is going to be Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. This is a collagen mutation, and sometimes they'll show a picture of somebody with really stretchy, flexible skin, um, and that's going to be Ehlers-Danlos. So the next condition is a patient that has long arms and legs, very tall, upward lens dislocation, and a mid-systolic click. Okay, so this is Marfan syndrome. This happens when you have a fibrillin gene mutation, and the mid-systolic click is due to a mitral valve prolapse that can happen. 
The next condition that we see here can be associated with Marfan syndrome, and it presents with a tearing chest pain and cystic medial necrosis of the aorta. So this is aortic dissection. The aorta becomes really weak because of the fibrillin um, mutation, and so the aorta can dissect, and we can get this sudden tearing chest pain, which is a very um, important complication of Marfan syndrome. Next, we have a condition that's often compared to Marfan syndrome. They can have a similar Marfanoid habitus, but a downward den lens dislocation, recurrent DVTs, and an intellectual disability. So this is going to be homocystinuria. So the next condition, patient's going to have recurrent infections, poor growth, fatty stools, nasal polyps, and pseudomonas infections. So this is going to be in cystic fibrosis. In this condition, we get a CFTR gene mutation, we get an abnormal chloride channel, and this basically causes lots of thick secretions all over. This plugs up our lungs, and that leads to the recurrent infections, and then we get fat-soluble vitamin deficiencies, so remember vitamin A, D, E, and K. In cystic fibrosis, uh, a complication of this in newborns can be delayed passage of meconium and bilious vomiting. And this is called meconium ileus. So in a newborn that doesn't have a bowel movement in the first few days of life, um, they can, it can be due to an underlying cystic fibrosis condition. And because of all this mucus plugging that's happening, um, sometimes the bowel can't make it all the way through the uh, intestines. And that's why they get this presentation. Another complication of cystic fibrosis would be epigastric pain of radiating to the back. Hope you got that one. It's pancreatitis, okay? Also another complication of cystic fibrosis. So the next condition is an obese child that loves to eat temper tantrums and almond-shaped eyes. So this is Prader-Willi syndrome. So Prader-Willi syndrome, two main ways that you can get this, paternal deletion of chromosome 15 or uniparental disomy of the mother's chromosome. The next condition that we like to compare it to, a little happy girl with inappropriate laughter. And this is Angelman syndrome. So similar for Prader Willi, except you know it's gonna be the mother's deletion of chromosome 15 or the paternal uniparental disomy. So those are really important. The next condition, patient's gonna come in with bo bony outgrowths on the face, hyperpigmented spots on the skin, and precocious puberty. So this is called McCoon Albright syndrome. And those hyperpigmented spots on the skin are called cafe au lait spots, which can also be seen in neurofibromatosis with the NF1 mutation. But in that condition, you're gonna have those fleshy neurofibromas on the body. Also, you're gonna have the cafe au lait spots and you can get the optic um, gliomas as well as the uh, iris nodules as well. So the next condition, boy with muscle weakness, uses his arms to stand up, bilateral calf enlargement, and a high creatine kinase level. So this is gonna be Duchenne or Becker muscular dystrophy. Now, the main difference between this is that Duchenne has a complete deletion of the dystrophin protein versus Becker has a decreased dystrophin protein. And a common cause of death in these patients is going to be a condition where they have an S3, decreased ejection fraction, eccentric hypertrophy, and globally enlarged heart. So this is dilated cardiomyopathy. And these children will die from dilated cardiomyopathy because their heart becomes really weak. The next condition, delayed release of handshake, balding, and testicular atrophy. So this is going to be myotonic dystrophy, okay? So this is going to be a trinucleotide repeat disease where they get a CTG uh, repeat um, and they have delayed relaxation of the thenar and hypothenar muscles. So the vignettes might say delayed release of handshakes, you know, difficulty releasing um, the doorknob, things like that. 
And again, this is a trinucleotide repeat disorder, so you can get things like anticipation, where the condition presents at an earlier age as the generations um, you know, go down and they get more severe symptoms. The next condition is a little girl with stereotypic hand movements and regression of function. So this is gonna be Rett syndrome. This is going to be an MECP2 mutation. And for at the beginning, the, these little girls will be developing normally. And then all of a sudden, you know, they'll stop doing the functions that they normally did previously. And they'll mention like, you know, repetitive hand movements or like flapping of the hands, things like that. And think about Rett syndrome for that. The next condition, a boy with a big face, big jaw, big ears, and big testes. So this is going to be fragile X syndrome. This is another trinucleotide repeat disorder with CGG. Remember the GG for giant gonads. Okay, so it's going to be a little boy with all these B symptoms. Okay, big face, big jaw, big ears, and big testes. So the next condition is a person that comes in with slanted palpebral fissures, single palmar crease, epicanthal folds, and duodenal atresia. Okay, so this is going to be Down syndrome, trisomy 21. Okay, so this is a really high yield condition. Remember, duodenal atresia will present with the double bubble sign on imaging. Okay, and they also have an increased risk of Alzheimer's due to the presence of APP on chromosome 21 as well. The next condition, cutis aplasia, where we have absence of the epidermis over the skull, holoprosencephaly, and an omphalocele. Okay, so this is Patau syndrome, trisomy 13. And remember, you get a bunch of midline defects, okay? So the skull, the, um, you know, you can get cleft lip, cleft palate, you can get the um, um, phallocele. So think of all of your midline defects, okay? The next condition, closed fists with overlapping fingers and micronathia or a small jaw. Okay, so this is Edwards syndrome, trisomy 18. Okay, so they really like to compare these different trisomies, so definitely know these key features for each. The next condition, 